on today's episode of Why Does My Lower Back Hurt? The old charger gets some upgrades. So it's about time that we got some real seats in here. And as you can see, that's a premium Corbeau aftermarket seat. Well, not quite. It's out of a 1996 Ford Escort. But I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. So the stock seats in this car have not been the most comfortable. They might have been one of the last things that was original to the car, but my butt takes priority over that. I mean, really, who would have thought that, you know, a 50-year-old seat foam wasn't that comfortable? Springs got less support than Windows XP. When you started a drive, your rearview mirror was in adjustment, and by the time you got to your destination, you would sink low enough that you could no longer see out the back window. So we spent an afternoon scouring the junkyard to try and find something that was going to fit. And sure enough, these were the tickets. Now since the interior is in a immaculate condition, we wanted something that looked factory, you know, correct. And being out of a two-door, seat folds almost the whole way forward for access back there. Overall dimensions of those seats are very close. But these ones have nice firm, a uh, little bit of side bolstering and surprisingly comfortable, even compared to the most modern cars. Overall height's pretty good and the seats kind of angle back a bit more and put you in a good position for pedal reach. They also fold completely flat. Now the parts yard only charged me 25 bucks a pop for these, so they are very affordable. And surprisingly enough, they were pretty easy to adapt over. So here'd be a quick rundown on how to do that. Now the first step to adapting these seats over is to make sure you go out and buy some good quality angle iron uh, before you do any real looking at the seats to see how they fit and then promptly discover you don't need it. So once you get the seats out, you'll see that the bottom frames are connected with just four bolts to the bottom of the seat. And by a good stroke of luck, the Ford Escort seats are also held on by a suspiciously close looking set of four bolts. Now we were going to originally build some angle brackets to adapt over the feet here that came with the Escort seats but you run into all sorts of height differences and width changes between the two and mounting the, uh, the pads at an angle, that wasn't going to be any fun. Well, we actually ought to save those bolts. So once those are out of the way, you can get your normal brackets here. And the bolt holes almost line exactly up. They are maybe one eighth of an inch closer than on this bracket and the spacing this way is exactly one inch wider than the original brackets. So we just got to use the whole stretcher on this one and you're good to go. Now you're going to have to cut some plastic here to clear the adjustment lever and I know that might pain you to cut into some you know original OEM Ford Escort seats but you'll get over it. I mean that looks factory. Now if you care about your passenger's comfort you, you're gonna have to extend the wire that connects the two uh, latches in here. However you can just let them ride carnival style if you don't care. Now you will need to account for that one inch difference and I'm sure you can make probably a little adapter bracket you know maybe as a spacer to uh, raise the seat up a half inch but you know Maybe remove the studs on the seat bottoms and put one bolt going up, one bolt going down, you know, weld them on there. That way you wouldn't have to change the factory holes. Or you could just drill new holes in the seat bases themselves, uh, slightly inwards to account for that. Or you could be like me and just not care and drill some new holes in your floor. Now make sure you check for any interferences with wires or fuel lines after you drill. There you go. And we even vacuumed up all the metal shavings off the floor. We might even wash this thing next. Nah. You want to be careful not to damage the seat when you're dragging it across the body panels. Oh man, like a glove. We didn't even have to drill the holes twice. 
all the residual cat hair that came with the seat, you know, that'll keep mice out of your car. There you go. 50 bucks and an hour of wrenching. Nice upgrade. Now it may not seem like much, but this upgrade has been in the works for quite a while. I built this car to be a driver, and some of those minor things that kind of bug you and, you know, that make it not quite an enjoyable drive, it wears on you after a while. And the seats were one of those things. I mean, the original vinyl seats are cool, and I know that the uh, 70 had those kind of unique high back seats. But when you was on hours long trips, it really showed as a weak point of the car. Same thing with the ventilation system. I ended up adding two extra little manual vents there to duct fresh air in when you're cruising down the highway. And I also painted the floor with that ceramic uh, lizard skin insulating paint to keep some of the engine bay heat out. Having some cooler airflow and movement in the car really made it a lot more enjoyable. I mean, if you can't tell, this car is not exactly a factory restoration. So don't worry about changing some of those little things that end up making your life a whole lot more enjoyable with a project like this. Because if you're not enjoying the car for what it is, why have it? Well, that ain't right. And that ain't right. That's better. That's the cheapest thing I've ever gotten out of an Escort.